Great. Well, I'm Isabel Hardman. I'm um, assistant editor of The Spectator. That's my day job. I also slightly accidentally set up Wildflower Hour, which um, I'm sure a lot of you take part in on a Sunday night. I set that up in 2015. Um, and I'm here to talk to you today about my book, uh, The Natural Health Service. Thank you for the introduction there. And it's quite a departure from my day job, which is as a political journalist, I'm based in the Houses of Parliament. And um, that's really my main focus is, is politics. But the reason I wrote this book is that in 2016, I had a mental breakdown. I became very, very ill. Uh, at the Conservative Party conference that year and I'm sure lots of people listening would think that that would be an entirely natural and healthy reaction to the Conservative Party conference but party conferences were and still are my bread and butter as a political journalist and I became too unwell not just to be able to cover that conference but actually to be able to really sort of think in sentences or write at all and I was diagnosed with post-traumatic stress disorder and have spent the ensuing years trying to recover or manage uh, that illness uh, and get used to living with, with a mental health problem as well. And one of the most important things in my recovery, as well as the medication that I've been prescribed by the NHS and the therapy as well, has been nature and getting outside every day and particularly botany. So in the long periods of sick leave that I've had in the past four years, I've become completely obsessed with plants, particularly orchids, and they were something that really kept me going in the darkest of days. In my book, I write about the sick leave I had in 2017, where I was very, very bored. I was home alone, basically. It was the snap election that Theresa May had called, and I didn't have very much to do. I was stuck at home with my thoughts, and I decided to distract myself by going orchid hunting every day. I was living in Cumbria at the time and obviously there are lots of incredible orchids there and I didn't actually know very much about wildflowers despite having set up wildflower hour by this point which is slightly bizarre and so I typed into Twitter Cumbria and orchid and discovered that there were some fly orchids just up the road from me and that started an obsession I suppose that distracted me from my mental illness and started helping me to focus on what was happening in the present moment in reality rather than on the torture chamber that was in my head and it has helped me all the way through to now being back at work I actually have a six-month-old son as well and I'm having to adapt my uh, my way of looking after myself uh, to being a, a new mother but that has worked very well because nature is very adaptable and nature is all around us and a lot of people have discovered that for the first time really I think during lockdown as you heard this morning from the more than weeds presentation so I decided to look more into why it was that nature had helped me keep going so much when I was particularly ill and it turned out that there was a lot of research on the role that nature can play in our mental health whether it's just maintaining good mental health in the same way as healthy people can have good physical health or whether it's in actually treating diagnosed mental illnesses all the way up to those that require significant amounts of time as an inpatient in a hospital. There's a theory which I'm sure quite a few of you are familiar with which is the biophilia hypothesis which is that humans have evolved in and alongside nature and therefore they need still to be around nature to feel fully comfortable and sane. And then those theories have been developed further by psychologists. So there's one which I found fascinating called attention restoration therapy. And that states that time spent in nature can actually renew our attention spans when they're flagging after a hard day's work or when we're not very well. And that goes through three phases of restoration, which use nature. And one of the really important parts of those phases is something called soft fascination, which is as I'm sure we all recognize very well as botanists, when you're outside and you're not fully focused on anything in particular, but you're just aware of your natural surroundings of the, the many plants and trees around you and it helps your mind to, to renew itself. I then visited uh, Bethlehem Royal Hospital to see the inpatient uh, gardens there, but they also have nature walks that they've set up for their patients to help them to focus on the world around them rather than on what's going on 
inside of their heads. And one of the really formative conversations I had, because my book involves lots of interviews, not just with psychiatrists and nurses and um, psychologists and, and so on, but also with people who suffer from mental health problems themselves. I interviewed Kevin Widowson, who I think is on this, um, I think is, is watching this at the moment, and um, who so many of us know as such an incredible botanist, someone who's taught a lot of us a, a great deal. Uh, with his incredible photos and uh, close-ups of plants. Uh, he talked to me about his major depressive disorder and how he used going for walks to look for flowers as part of his mindfulness exercises. And this was absolutely revelatory to me because I'd tried mindfulness, I'd tried those apps like Headspace uh, when I was sick and I found that they actually made me worse because I would sit in a quiet room and meditate and all the thoughts I'd tried to keep at bay all day long would just come flooding straight back into my mind and uh, I'd give up in despair. Whereas Kevin's method was to go out for a walk and to focus on flowers around him and it helped him to focus on what was real rather than what was in his head and it did exactly the same thing for me and so really I've been able to indulge a hobby, a personal fascination with plants to help me to treat my mental health problem and hopefully also to encourage other people who are suffering that getting outside in nature is not just something you do when you have a bit of spare time or when you're sort of white and middle class and you know it's the sort of thing that you do on a Sunday afternoon it's actually essential for your mental well-being and that's why I think that the work of the BSBI so many people watching this who work in botany in one way or the other is so important because you are highlighting plants to one another but also to the wider world the incredible intricacies of plants the the strange plants the small easily overlooked plants that can actually help save people's sanities help save people's lives and if there are people watching this who don't have mental health problems, but are very keen to raise the profile of plants who want to know how to use plants and green surroundings to help people with mental health problems. I would just say to them, just communicate your enthusiasm for the incredible world of plants and botany to others, because it will have a greater and more profound effect than you realise. And the work that people in, involved in conservation or in ensuring the reintroduction of species are doing, you're not just safeguarding your environment, you're safeguarding a natural health service for people who, for whom medicine and the biomedical model, it can only do so much. The natural world has a huge role to play. And I think so many of us have become disconnected through that. But thanks to botanists, thanks to so many people watching this, there's an opportunity to get obsessed with nature again, to get obsessed with plants and to feel better as well. So thank you for listening.